Hey, I'm Chris, and this is MMA for You. I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC 203, Miocic versus Overeem, which happens on September 10th. Uh, but before I get into that, I'd like to plug my own author's website at www.chrismoldon.com. I am an author specializing in the fantasy genre, and you can uh, buy some of my works, starting with my first novel, an action adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom for $4.99 at www.chrismoldon.com on PDF format or if you have an e-reader like a Kindle you can buy it for $4.99 on Amazon.com also for just $1.99 uh, you can buy some of my short stories and short story collections uh, on my website or on Amazon.com starting with uh, the fantasy horror short story The Land of the Wind Statues which and I'm currently trying to make into a full novel uh, the horror collection which is a collection a compilation of three of my gothic horror short stories and my fantasy fable collection which is a compilation of four of my fantasy fable short stories uh, links to all of these are provided in the description. Uh, you can also follow me on like uh, Twitter, which is also in the descriptions, and uh, check out like my author's Facebook page and whatnot. Okay, uh, on to the card though. It's a good card. I like it. Uh, I like the main event. I think. That Verdum versus Brown two, at least it's interesting. You know, you had two top level heavyweights fighting, even though like Verdum beat him just like two years ago. There definitely is a curiosity factor with a novelty factor with the debut of Phil CM Punk Brooks. You just don't know what to expect from the guy. Uh, Faber versus Havera might be something of a sleeper fight. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And on paper, Andras versus Calder should be a lot of fun. Prelims, not too bad. Um, I like I versus Kohea, actually. I think that'll be... I don't think about Grinder at the very least. But these two, they don't necessarily like, hit hard. So I don't know if you're going to see too much fight changing offense, but you never know. Lance is fighting UFC newcomer Michael McBride. I can't really speak much about that fight. It's because I don't know much about McBride. Uh, Maggie S yes versus uh, Brad Tavares. Could actually be alright. Um, that one's close. Borg versus uh, Ian McCall. That should be really good. On the prelims, Medeiros versus Spencer. Actually, I think that could be pretty fun. Because I'll pro I, I would bet it's primarily going to be standing. Uh, Dalloway versus Barros. Uh, I don't I don't think it's going to be that great. But you never know. Dalloway could surprise us, maybe. Dover versus Gonzalez. Looks like a mid-level fight. Oh, Gonzalez uh, actually is pretty good. i actually some, seen some of the stuff. And Dover's improving. So it could be like an okay fight at, at least. Maybe a pretty decent fight at best, you know. Um, wait, that's actually the same thing. A decent fight at least and a good fight at best. So, um, let's get started. In the main event for the UFC heavyweight title, Alistair, the Reem over Reem, fights Stipe Miocic. Uh, Miocic, 15-2 and two record, 11 wins by KO Tika, 1 win by sub. I think it's sub by strikes, too. He's 34 years old. He's 6'4", on a three-fight win streak, and trains out of a strong-style fight team. He is the current UFC heavyweight champion, knocking out former champ and fighter heavyweight that's also going to fight on this card, Fabricio Verdum. Miocic's kind of good everywhere. I mean, he gets, like... Uh, like his boxing is solid. He uses combinations well. He's pretty heavy-handed. His chin's actually not too bad. Uh, he, and he does have a wrestling base too, actually. His wrestling, he can always rely on it. It's good offensively and defensively. Uh, 
you have to remember, like, this guy was taking down, like, Mark Hunt with a single leg over and over and over again. And ground and pounding him. Um, and also, this fight is happening in his hometown, so I kind of wonder... That can work both ways. Obviously, he's going to have the crowd support, but then there's the pressure. Also, just like constant media and whatnot and, and motivation. Uh, I think he still might be a part-time fighter, too. Uh, isn't he like a, what, a paramedic or something? Or firefighter or firefighter paramedic or something to that nature? So, um, yeah, that's all things to consider. Alistair Overeem, 41 and 14 record with four or with one no contest, 18 wins by KO Tico, 19 wins by sub. That says nine losses by KO Tico and two losses by sub. 36 years old, he's 6'5 on a four fight win streak, training out of Jackson Winklejohn. He is a former Strike Force heavyweight champion, and his style of fighting has change since he got into the UFC he has this in and out style of stand up now he'll go in throw like a knee or like one big punch or a kick even and he gets out in and out it's helped him in the sense because his uh, he's always been pretty bad at boxing range so this new style has kind of mitigated that weakness of his. If he's in and out, he's not necessarily in boxing range, and or in the pocket for exp or for long periods of time. Uh, his kickboxing strong offensively. He's real heavy-handed. Knocked out Junior Dos Santos, which recently knocked out Andre Arlovsky with a front kick to the face and follow-up punches. Um, I want to even say it may have been a jumping front kick too. No, nah, I think it's just a normal front kick. Uh, his knees, especially in the clinch, are really strong. Uh, he'll aim for the head and the body. His wrestling's good, too, both offensively and defensively. He can take opponents down. And his takedown defense is actually pretty good, too. He's hard to take down. He's just really strong. His overall grappling's good, too. He has a good front headlock. Um... He actually has pretty good ground and pound, too. He doesn't use too much subs, but it is in his arsenal. Some of his weaknesses, his chin is not very good. His cardio is also, it's a question mark, but I think he's getting better about a lot of things. Um, he's also just lighter these days, uh, post-Usada. He's one of the few guys, actually, post-Usada. He's been caught, you know. Uh, that has actually looked better. And has actually used his natural, like, speed advantage to his favor. Whereas he was so, like, bulked up and whatnot. His, like, cardio kind of sucked. And he just was this, like, total front runner. Uh, this time, with his new style and whatnot... I would actually argue he's a better fighter now uh, than he was when you know when he was more more or less taken to horse meat, if you know what I mean. It's just he's been caught, so you know, like this isn't an accusation. It's hey, like there's evidence he's been caught for for substances and whatnot before. So, um, with that said, fifty fifty. Uh, at this point, any fight that's not with Demetrius Johnson, Yohan and Jacek, arguably John Jones, except the, except if any fights Rumble, I want to I I want to even say that might be fifty fifty, but like pretty much every championship fight <laughs> at this point is a pick'em. I, I I don't know how else to say it. It's just every champion looks beatable. They don't have these, like, not too many have these, like, amazing skill sets or is that far ahead of, like, the rest of the competition. Uh, they just don't have too many dominant champions, save for Demetrius Johnson. And, I mean, that's so bad that I have to make a season of tough just to find some dude, some fresh guy to fight him, you know? 
and then Yuan and Young Jacek, and even then with her, with all this new talent coming in that division, um, it's never know. And John Jones does not know where he's at, and he still hasn't fought Rumble, so I can't really say that, you know, a hundred percent. Every other division, though, I mean, this is heavyweight too. Uh, two, you know, like I, I think the record is what two title defenses is the most or something like that at heavyweight. So this is a title that keeps changing hands. So it's a pick and fight, but. So I'm kind of going with a feeling here. Uh, I'm going with Overeem. Yeah, I'm going to pick Overeem to win this one. At the very least. Miocic likes to box. Okay, from a technical standpoint. And I, you know, the thing, the fact that matters is this. If I pick Stipe, I can make a good, a, a relatively good technical argument for Stipe. Just as much as I can make for Overeem. So I, it's a coin flip for me. Honestly, I can say Steve A has a boxing. He's more resilient. His chin isn't as bad. He's fighting in Cleveland. Better cardio. Better chin. Boxes. You know? And Overeem's bad at boxing. On the case for Overeem. Variety. Because if Overeem's all the way in, he's throwing knees. If he's out, he's probably a better kicker. And then, to mitigate the boxing, he's using an in-out style to deal with that. Um, so, and then wrestling, I, I honestly would actually say it cancels each other out. Uh, but just, once again, I, I have to wonder what champions are like in DFC these days. Are, is it just like, I'm the champion, I lost motivation? <laughs> Because the way they're losing, their you know, a lot of champions are losing their titles in the first round. Um, or is it just a case of no one's a dominant champion. Everyone can beat each other on any given night. So that, you know, it, it is what it is. I think it's more of that. And so with that said, I'm, I'm actually going to go Alistair Overeem by knockout. Uh, I... Is that has to be something said about momentum too. Both actually have pretty good momentum though. That's the problem. Uh, I wonder if this would be uh, Overeem's last chance at a title shot if he loses. But like I said, it's heavyweight also. So that's also making this absolutely unpredictable. <laughs> because it's like one punch and, you know, guy wins. Yeah, uh, so, with that said, it's a pick and fight for me. I'm not confident about this pick because it's a, it's a title fight, and we've seen titles changing in the first round so many times this year. And then it's heavyweight, and heavyweight is the weirdest division because, like, no one can truly sustain, a, or, like, some sort of... Uh, other dominance, so, um, just repeating myself now, Alistair Overeem by KO or TKO. Next right after that, Fabrizio by Cavallo, Verdum fights Travis Hoppa Brown. Verdum, 20 and 6 record with one draw, 6 wins by KO or TKO, 10 wins by sub, he also has 2 losses by KO or TKO, 39 years old, he's 6'4", training out of Kings MMA. He's a former UFC heavyweight champion, and he's defeated Brown by unanimous decision, five-rounder, back in April of 2014. He is a top Brazilian G2 practitioner. Stand-up is improving, despite the utterly questionable game plan he, he utilized against Stipe. The, this, like, charging in with punches thing. He's done it before. But, like, he also has, like, good kicks, and if he's in the clinch, he has good knees, too. But for some weird reason, he just decided to run and, like, punch against Stipe. I, I hope that changes <laughs> in this fight. Like I say, uh, his knees uh, from the clinch are really good. He's really just good in the clinch. His cardio is pretty good, too. I mean, this is a guy that, like, outlasted Cain Velasquez in Mexico. Um, he went five rounds with Travis Brown. Uh, 
So his cardio is good. And despite the fact that he's been knocked out by Dino DeSantis and Stipe, for the most part, he's shown a pretty good chin. Uh, he has been dropped by Mark Hunt. So it, it's one of those things that's like, I don't know how, it's gonna, how long it's going to last, but he's shown a relatively good chin at this point. And, and Brown's kind of the same way, too. Uh, Travis Brown, 18-4 and four record with one draw. 14 wins by KRTK, two wins by Sub. He also has three losses by KRTK. And like I said, it's the same thing. Like, when you bought, like, Andre Olofsky, he wouldn't go down, even though he's taking all his hard shots. But then, like, Kane Velasquez just put him down and put him out. Uh, and then he got, you know, he got knocked out by uh, Bigfoot Silva as well. So, he'll take some hard hits, too. But, you know, his chin is shown to be pretty good regardless. Uh, Brown is 34 years old. He's 6'7". Trains out of Glendale Fighting Club. And I, I think that... You, I, if you watch the show, you, you'd know that I am not a fan of that camp. And I know guys like Jake Allenberger has just left that camp for Kings. Uh, I think that was a great move on his part because he's just knocked out. Um, Matt Brown with like the first liver kick he's ever thrown. You know? Um... So, yeah, I, I kind of wish Brown would go somewhere else, but Kennedy, who's trading losses and wins right now, most recently losing to uh, Kane Velasquez by knockout. Uh, his stand-up's good. He's real heavy-handed. Uh, he's good chin. His takedown defense is really good. He has a half of elbows, uh, especially if he's up against a cage. And so, well, grappling's improving, too. Um, like, it, like, He's gotten, like, he'll go for his own takedowns, like he did against Schaub. He did against Mitrion, too, if I'm not mistaken. And then, like, can finish with ground and pound. So he's actually not bad on top. And pretty heavy on top, too, actually. Uh, with that said, I mean, Verdum's chin isn't getting better or anything like that. So uh, it's heavyweight, once again. But the fact of the matter is, um, Verdum's just more well-rounded. He's been in Brown before, and I'm going to say this, too. I think Brown's actually, uh, getting worse as a fighter and not better. I, I just, I don't see improvements in him, you know. So, I'll go for reach over Verdum, ability to mix in more, uh, variety of strikes, and, um, you know, also has the ground game, too. So, uh, Verdum, I'll go by decision. Next right after that, Mickey Gall fights Phil CM Punk Brooks. So, Mickey Gall, 2-0 undefeated record. All two wins by submission. Most recently beating Kevin Jackson. Dropping with an overhand and um, taking his back and took him out. 24 years old. He's 5'11". Turns out of Miller Brothers MMA with like Dan and Jim Miller. He's never been past the first round as a pro. You know, like, you can't really get much from his fight. Wait, I said Kevin Jackson? Oh, my gosh. I, my bad. I meant, I think his name was Michael Jackson, if I'm not mistaken, or something that nature. Um, yeah, I, I think it was Michael Jackson, actually. <laughs> um, uh, it, you know, we saw an overhand right in his fight. So, it's like, I can't really speak much for a stand-up. I've seen some of his grappling videos. He's done some competitions. He didn't look too bad. Okay, CM Punk. Phil Brooks. No pro fights. 37 years old. 6'2". Trained out of Rufus Sport. Unproven. And I have just gotten word that he is having problems with his weight cut. And... At 6'2", your first fight ever, this guy, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in WWE, um, he was in the 200 pound range. He has to cut down to 170, um, or higher. I, I wouldn't even go so far as to say he's like, he, he weighed in a, he, you know, I mean, he can't really trust the weight of what they say in like WWE, but like, it wouldn't surprise me if he was like, 215, 220. Um, so, and, uh, you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but they, 
they're saying this week he needs to cut 30 pounds. He's tall, he's old, and he's never cut weight before. So, um, I'm not surprised. <laughs> to quote Nate Diaz, it would, if this is true, this does not surprise me. No real martial arts background. He's a, what, blue belt under the Gracie's Henner? Gracie? If I'm not mistaken. Um, could be wrong there. Not 100% sure uh, what's Gracie, but he's a blue belt under the Gracie's. Um, I can attest I'm a blue belt. <laughs> and I don't want to say it's like meaningless because, uh, you know, in Jiu Jitsu, it, it, you know, that's like two years of Jiu Jitsu at least. But, like, as far as that transitioning to MMA, I mean, you know, you still leave holes if you're in top position. Uh, if you're off your back, I mean, I, I don't know if he's some crazy scrambler. I don't know if he's a submission guy. I don't know if he's a positional guy. I don't know if he likes working from his back. I don't know if he likes to work from top position. I... I don't know, like, being a blue belt in BJJ can mean anything. So with that said, Mickey Gall, by finish, um, let's go by knockout. Mickey Gall, I saw Nick, Mickey Gall winning this by knockout. It's just, um, dude's improving. I mean, got a guy who... We don't know if Mickey Gall is a scrub yet, or if he is a young talent. Right now, he's a young, unproven talent, but and most would probably classify him under the prospect range. He's only 24 years old, two fights. So that's, for the most part, that would be considered a prospect. Uh, I do feel that there's a distinction between... I was having a discussion with someone about this, actually. Um, there's a distinction between prospect and... Uh, Young fighter, but you know what? That's neither here nor there. Um, Mickey Gall, KO, or TKO. If that doesn't happen, it wouldn't be surprised me to see him get a sub. Take his back and get a sub. So, uh, yeah. Mickey Gall, KO, or TKO. As far as that, Uriah, the California kid favor, fights Jimmy Altera uh, Rivera. Uriah Faber, uh, 33-9 record, 7 wins by K.O. Tico, 19 wins by Sub. Has a 3 losses by K.O. Tico, 37 years old. He's 5'6", trains out of Team Alpha Male. He's training losses and wins right now, most recently losing to Dominic Cruz. He's a former WEC featherweight champion. Uh, his cardio is strong. He can go 5 rounds and has gone 5 rounds quite a bit in his career. He has a really strong clinch game and strong wrestling. His ground and pound is really good. If he's on top, it's constant. Um, his gi team is one of the best in the business. His back control. If he takes a back, it's like you're pretty much getting subbed. I mean, that's that's how good this guy is at like taking the back and like getting that the rear naked choke. His stand-up, I'd say it's just good, but it's not great. Uh, one of his biggest weaknesses has always been range. He's just a guy that can put like a jab in his face. Can beat favor. I kid you not, too. Like guys that didn't just keep him at range with it with their punches tend to do well against favor. Jimmy Rivera, uh, nineteen and one record, four wins by KO Tico, two wins by sub. Twenty seven years old, he's five four on an eighteen fight win streak. Trains out a team Tiger Showman. And actually uh, Uriah Hall came from there. Lyman Good came from there. So it's actually, you know, the Tiger Showman guys are not that bad. Um, his stand-up's good. He's particularly a good boxer. He's showing more power in his strikes now. And he does strike in combination. His chin's pretty good too. And his wrestling's not too bad either. His cardio's not too bad too. Um, rule of thumb with Uriah Faber. Anyone who's not a championship level fighter... I have favor beats. That's usually how it goes. Burrell, Cruz, uh, whoever. It has to be said, though, the guys he's fighting, whether it's Frankie Signs, 
uh, Alex Caceres. I mean, they can be like ranging from like mid-level guys, like tough mid-level guys to like high-level guys. He, it seems to be harder and harder for him to beat these guys. Eventually, the wheels are gonna fall off. Um, skill for skill wise too. Uh, I think favor might. I don't even know if he pushes the pace better. Then Havera pushes the pace pretty good. Uh, it's just Favor is more likely to go for the takedown. Uh, but I have to favor Havera standing. And overall, I know the general rule of thumb in Favor is if it's not a title fight, not, I guess, really elite level fighter, like Frankie Edgar or something like that, Favor wins. But. I can't help but feel that the wheels are falling off at this point. I also like Jimmy Rivera's overall game. I think he might be able to strike, you know, go strike for strike. If not be the better striker than Faber, probably the better boxer. He's a good enough wrestler and scrambler. I mean, both of them are good scramblers. Faber especially is a great scrambler. Uh, Hivera's not a bad scrambler, too. If he's on the bottom, he can scramble back to his feet, too. He's just a strong guy, too. So, with that said, I think it'll be close, but... I'm gonna go Jimmy Hivera to win this one. Uh, by decision. I, I, I think that he can beat up Faber on the feet, defend the takedowns, and, uh, you know, get the decision win. I, 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 I just can't help but feel that... F and part of this, too, is also... A non-technical reason. I just think that favor. I mean, he, I think he's been comp contemplating retirement. Uh, he just lost to Cruz, and I, I, I can't help but feel the wheels are falling off with him. Okay, so Hevera uh, by decision. As far as that, Jessica Batistaka Andrade fights Joanne Jojo Calderwood. Jessica Andrade, 14 and 5 record, 5 wins by Kerotico, 6 wins by sub. She has two losses by Kerotico and 2 losses by sub. 24 years old. She's 5 2 trading wins and losses, most recently beating Jessica Panay and beating her up pretty bad. She is big for 115. Joanne Caldwell is actually pretty big for her weight class, too. She's tall. 4 dot weight class, 5 6. And, um,. Yeah, she bought 125 and didn't look undersized at all, most recently against Latornia. Um, but Andras, her stand-up style is brawling. She likes to get in the pocket and just brawl. She's heavy-handed, especially at this weight class. She's strong, too. She is strong at 135. She looks strong at 115. She is very aggressive, always pushing forward. And Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills aren't that bad. She actually has a pretty decent guillotine. For one thing, she can wrestle a bit. She's not a bad. She's not bad on the ground. Calderwood, 11 and one record, five wins by KO Tico, six wins by decision. 29 years old. She's five six on a two fight win streak. Was recently beating Valerie Latornu. Uh, last time she was training out at TriStar. I don't know if she's still gonna be able to train there. She looked good. I'm um, training out of there. And Dinky Ninjas as her home gym in Scotland. Uh, her Muay Thai is good in the sense that her knees and elbows, especially in the clinch, are really strong. But even in open space, like not in the clinch, I mean, she'll find some really sneaky elbows. Uh, you saw it in the Latornu fight. And her knees to the body are really good. Her body attacks actually are really good. And, and of course, she'll hit the head too. Uh, her kicks actually aren't too bad. And her takedown defense isn't too bad too. Uh, some of her weaknesses, though, she has a couple weaknesses. Uh, one, she's not very good off her back. Two, her defense standing's pretty bad. And three, she is one of those people, some fighters are just really bad at boxing range. And Joanne Caldwood. Is just bad at boxing range. I I think I'm starting to pinpoint why that is, and and that could be the base. I, I've actually practiced like some some Muay Thai, along with boxing, and I noticed that like, you know, you have a really squared stance, um, 
I remember talking to some of my coaches too, and they're just saying, yeah, with Muay Thai, it's just like you're trading. It's like this guy throws, and that guy throws, this guy throws, that guy throws. You have a square stance, so you don't have like the same punching mechanics. It's a really square, like almost arm punches. So the thing with uh, like guys that do like pure Muay Thai is that they don't always have the bat. They're not great punchers a lot of time not, not all the time obviously but like and it's just something I, I, I've noticed uh, and, and that kind of fits Calderwood to a T really uh, she's really good all the way inside she's not a bad kicker but she's not good in like just a pocket like throwing punches this makes it that makes this fight really hard because one Andrade is going to get in the pocket. I want to throw haymakers. And her defense is not very good. Calderwood's defense is not very good. And she's not that good at boxing range. The biggest problem with Andrade is more of an unknown. For one, we don't know how long she can maintain uh, the pace that she's shown at 115. I'm, st I'm very doubtful she can maintain that pace. Uh, for three rounds that she does. Two, Caldwell will take a couple to get into her desired range. That's her style. And that's probably why she takes punches the way she does. So she can slowly but surely get inside more to throw like the strikes she wants to throw. Uh, so that makes this fight really hard. But ultimately, I'm going to go Jessica Andrade to land punches uh, consistently overwhelm Calderwood might be hard to do but this goes to the later rounds and Calderwood's still strong yeah you know I, I gotta go Calderwood Calderwood's tough too at the very least she's tough when she's mentally there too nothing go when there's no like drama in her personal life she seems to fight really well because when she had all that drama in her personal life she's fighting really bad you know <laughs> She doesn't have that right now, to my knowledge. So, um, she's probably going to fight pretty well. But Andrade is so big for the weight class, so strong for this weight class. She hits hard. Uh, so, I'm actually going to go Jessica Andrade to win by KRTK. The next fight after that, uh, and uh, FS1 prelims, Betch Pitbull Cohea by Jessica Evil Eye. Kohea, 9 and 2 record, 2 wins by KO Tico, 7 wins by decision, 33 years old, 5 4 on a 2 fight losing streak, most recently losing to Raquel Pennington, and a fight she's shown some improvement in. I believe she's training out at AKA these days, I'm not too sure if that's still the case. But her stand up actually looked pretty good. Uh, she's always been relatively technical, you know. Uh, she punches in combinations, she's, just, she's not particularly heavy handed though. And her graphene's always been pretty average. She's not easy to take down. Uh, she's not easy to keep down. So, she, you know, her graphene's not too bad. Jessica I, uh, 11 and 5 record with one no contest, three wins by KO Tico, one win by Sub. 30 years old, she's 5'6 on a three fight losing streak, training out a strong style fight team. Uh, her boxing's actually pretty solid. Her graphene's, I'd say it's pretty average, you know. Interestingly enough, she fought Juliana Pena in her uh, was it last fight, and she did it too bad. Didn't do too bad in the grappling. She was actually defending takedowns relatively well. Even got the clinch against the cage on Pena and put Pena's back against the cage. And even on the ground, Pena had a really hard time controlling her because she was so busy from the bottom. Uh, with that said, I like Jessica I here. Uh, I think she'll be the better boxer in this fight. I think Betchko has shown improvement, but also Jessica I is just probably the better athlete. Uh, Koya just isn't much of an athlete. Like I said, she doesn't hit particularly hard. I, pretty good athlete. I, I wouldn't say she's particularly heavy handed, but, um, you know, it strikes well enough. Uh, both of them are actually kind of on the small side for 135, too. So, yeah, I'll go Jessica I by decision. Next fight after that, Nick Carney lance fights Michael McBride. 
McBride, 8 and 1 record, all 8 wins by submission. He is a finisher. He's 6 1. Wow, 6-1 at 155 is pretty tall. Just got to say that right now. Um, not super tall, but it is pretty tall. It's on a four-fight win streak, and it's first fight in the UFC, and he's taking fight on short notice. And I hate to say this, I tried really hard to find any footage, fight footage of him. I couldn't find any. And which is weird, because he's fighting like RFA and Bellator. I thought I'd be able to find those fights, but I just I couldn't find them, so... You know, I can only assume from the fact that all eight wins of his are by sub that, you know, he's good on the ground. Um, and that's all I can say. Nick Lentz, 26-7 and seven record with two draws and one no contest. Six wins by K.O. Tico, ten wins by sub. He also has two losses by K.O. Tico and two losses by sub. 32 years old, he's 5'8", training out of ATT. He's training wins and losses. Uh, he's fought good guys, you know, guys that are good on the ground, too. Uh, and, and, you know, against, like, Charles Oliveira, he's lost, but, you know, he's beaten, um, ah, oh, jeez, I've got the, man, I always forget the guy's name now. Uh, Brazilian guy out of Nova Unia, that's pretty good, that's a grinder. But anyways, Nick Lentz, good wrestler, and he can grind if he wants to. He'll take the back. He'll ride. Uh, he'll stick with top control if he needs to. His ground and pound's not too bad. And his overall stand-up is actually improving. It's still sloppy. Like, relatively sloppy. But it's not, like, too bad. Um, it was enough, also, to beat Danny Castillo. <laughs> so, with that said, I know nothing of Michael McBride. And then Nick Lentz has, like, what, four times more fights than him? It's not his first run to UFC. So... I'll go Nick Lentz and win this one. I'll go by decision. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. I, he could possibly finish him. Uh, but I'll just go by Nick Lentz by decision. Next one is that. Kyle Hellboy Maggie S yes, fights Brad Tavares. Uh, Brad Tavares, 13-4 and four record. Four wins by K.O. Tico. Two wins by Sub. As has two losses by K.O. Tico. 28 years old. He's 5'11". And trains out of Extreme Couture. He last fought in May of 2015. Losing to Whitaker? Not a bad loss. You know, losing to Robert Whitaker, especially these days. You know, not a bad loss. Uh, Tavares' striking style is primarily inside boxing. Which is... I'm really surprised because, like, he's, he hasn't shown to be particularly heavy-handed. Uh... It, but that really surprises me. He uses combinations well, and his takedown defense actually isn't too bad, too. Ka Kyle Magalhaes, uh, 9-2 and two record, 3 wins by K.O. Tico, 3 wins by Sub, 28 years old, 6-1, last fought in July of 2015. I mean, last, uh, lost to uh, Josh Man by Rear Naked Choke. He is a BJJ black belt. Uh, his wrestling, though, his ability to take the fight to the ground is just average. It's big for the weight class. His stand-up is improving, like, he's got, in the sense that he's finding his power. Um, with that said, though, this one's actually hard for me to call, because, um, it wouldn't surprise me if Kyle Magulus lands, like, a big shot on Brad Tavares. It, it's entirely possible. I've seen Bosch do it. Obviously, like, Whitaker just put him away quite easily. Brad Tavares has shown to be pretty, pretty resilient. He sticks to a good game plan. It's a good inside boxing game. Out volumes guys sometimes. Um, and it's a good takedown defense. I think that's enough to get a decision win. So yeah, I'm going to go Brad Tavares by decision. Let's try out that Ray the Tattoo's Mexican Devil Borg fights Uncle Creepy Ian McCall. Ian McCall, 13-5 record and one draw. Four wins by K.O. Tico, three wins by Sub, 32 years old. He's 5'5", five five, trains out of Team Oyama, and he last fought in January of 2015. I want to say that was against uh, Lineker. Uh, his style of fighting is in and out boxing. He'll go in, throw his punches, and get out. And that's, he's used that to great effect, actually. His wrestling and overall Brazilian jiu skills are quite solid, too. 
Uh, Ray Borg, 9-2 and two record, 1-1 one, one by TK, 6 ones by Sub, 23 years old, he's 5'4", trains out of Fit NHB. Uh, Borg, good wrestler and a strong scrambler. Uh, his back control is really good as well. His resilience, his skills are solid. Um, he he will like he'll be in half guard, and like will attack like a Kimura and then a guillotine, and then like a guard pass, and will keep or like an arm triangle in there too. He'll keep working like three different attacks, three or four different attacks. And certain positions. Um, yeah, so, yeah, his BJ skills are pretty solid. His stand up, though, has proven to be just average at best. This one's really hard for me to call. One thing about Ian McCall is this guy hasn't fought in a while. Once again, he seems really frustrated that he hasn't been fighting for a while. He also has just a lot of injuries, too. So, like, I don't really know where that leaves him. He just hasn't fought in a while. Um, so I don't know about his motivation to fight. Ray Borg is still a very good prospect. Uh, I'd, I'd call him a blue chip prospect. You know, he, he needs to work on the striking. Scoggins kind of exposed him a bit. And granted, you know, like Scoggins... Is really good and then McCall does have the wrestling to like probably take him down and not get subbed and not get like out hustled um, and then standing as an in and out style I kind of wonder though uh, about Borg um, just fighting more often he's a guy that's showing more improvements here but ooh, wow, I, wow I, I, you know I, I'm going with Borg here Okay, like, but, like, after talking about it, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, um, Ian McCall sounds pretty good here, <laughs> not going to lie, stylistically, the in and out style boxing, good wrestler, uh, that's a pretty tough stylistic matchup for Borg, so the only thing I can count on is whether or not he can get the takedowns on McCall, or, and or outscramble him, and then, how well he can do in the stand up too. Um oh, what the heck. I'll still go as Ray Borg to win this one. Just because it, it's kind of X Factor ish so like the fact that McCall last time we fought was in January of twenty fifteen. So he's been out for well over a year. He's had a lot of injuries. His motivation seems a bit questionable. Um and Borg constantly improving. I don't. I can't really say if he's gonna outstrike McCall. I, I actually think McCall's probably the better striker. Uh, and it really got, comes down who who's the better wrestler here. And um, that might actually be McCall. But Borg, in his own right, is a good wrestler and a great grappler in his own right. I'll go Ray Borg by decision. But as you can tell, it is not a pick I'm confident in. Uh, at all just from a stylistic standpoint I just don't know where he has an advantage per se but then X factors tend to affect McCall as well kind of fight past prelims he answered the kid Madero's fights Sean black magic Spencer I don't know what weight class this is if this is 170 or like Spencer's cutting down to 155 I don't really know Madero's is moving up to 170 um Anyways, Madero's 12 and 4 record with one no contest. Six wins by KO Tico, three wins by Sub. That's his two losses by KO Tico. 28 years old, he's 5'10, trading losses and wins. Uh, his stand up's actually pretty good. He's pretty heavy handed, too. And has shown to have a good chin, despite, like. He's been dropped and hit, like, hard. Like, Moss from Duba just beat him up. Eric, or, um. Uh, Dustin Poirier beat him up too, but like he's always like in the fight. He's a scrapper, you know. And his takedown defense actually isn't too bad. And uh, Maduro actually has a pretty good front choke series as well. 
Sean Spencer, 12 and 5 record, 2 wins by Kaotiko, 2 wins by Sub. He has those 2 losses by Sub. 29 years old, he's 5'10 on a 2 fight losing streak. Training out of Octagon MMA. Stand up is actually pretty good. He uses combinations well. He boxes pretty well. His takedown defense is pretty solid. His biggest problem, though, is he's just not heavy handed. I mean, the guy, he has dropped guys like Kyle Pender, Pendred, and even Mike Pyle. And wobbled, um, uh, geez, forgot his name, but, uh, the Dominican Nightmare, uh, uh, Rodriguez, right? But, um, for the most part, he just isn't a potent finisher. Like, it, it seems like he's trying to be, but he's just not. He just doesn't have it in him. Uh, with that said, I like Yancey Madero's here. Um, I think Spencer's the better technical striker. Uh, Medeiros, though, is the uh, more potent finisher. And, like I said, he's a pretty good striker in his own right. Uh, so, I like Yancey Medeiros to win. Heck, I'll even go by K or TKO. Not what I'm confident in, because Medeiros' defense standing has not looked very good. And there's a lot of fights that... There are a couple fights against McDassie that are, like, close that he probably shouldn't have won. <laughs> so, but... I like Madero's here uh, to win by KRTK. It's right off that CB, the Doberman Dalloway fence, Francois Badal Barroso. Or is it Baroche? I'll go Barroso. Uh, Barroso, 18 and 5 record, 8 wins by KRTK, 6 wins by sub, 3 losses by KRTK, 36 years old, he's 6 1, trains out of Nova Uniao. Uh, his thing is, he's like kind of big and tough. Like He, he kind of strikes a clinch. And once he clinches, that's kind of it. <laughs> His overall grappling skills are just kind of average, too. Um, CB Dalloway, 15 and 8 record, 6 wins by Kaotiko, 3 wins by Sub. That says 4 losses by Kaotiko and 2 losses by Sub. 33 years old, he's 6 2 on a 3 fight losing streak. Uh, trains out of Power MMA. He is moving up to 205 for this. I've never actually thought of him as a big middleweight by any stretch, but he is getting older, and he's not undersized at the weight class, too. I guess 6'2", he's tall enough. Might actually find some, some more success uh, at 205. Uh, at Dolly's best, he's a good wrestler with really good top control. Uh, his boxing has made improvements, but his defense is terrible, and his chin isn't very good. His chin might actually be helped by moving up in weight class, though. Uh, with that said, I mean, Dalloway at least has the wrestling, and it, he's not a terrible boxer, except when he, like, lunged forward, and then, like, got knocked out by Nate Marquardt, you know? Among other times, he, he's he's been, like, knocked out or, or wobbled and whatnot, but, um, I think Dalloway might actually be the better striker than Barroso, and then he's probably the better wrestler, too, so I'll go with, uh, CB Dalloway to win by decision. And finally, Drew Dober fights Jason Gonzalez. Drew Dober, 16-7 and seven record with one no contest. Two wins by K.O. Tico, nine wins by Sub. He's 27 years old. He's 5'8". Um, you know, Dober's kind of like a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of guy. His wrestling's improving, like in his last fight. Uh, gosh, you know, there's so many guys on the roster. I, just, I forgot the name of the guy he beat. The guy who trains on the MMA lab, like, he's shown improved wrestling. He's always been pre a pretty good grappler. His stand-up's average, you know, he's not... Dober's not bad standing, but he's not, like, particularly great either. Jason Gonzalez, 10-2 and two record, 4 wins by K.O. Tico, 6 wins by Sub. Has has 1 loss by Tico, 1 loss by Sub. 26 years old, he's 6-2 on a 6-fight win streak. His first fight in the UFC way a lot taller than his opposition he uses it pretty well I've seen some of his fights he's a finisher he's never been to decision I actually like his stand up I mean he kind of uses the same punch kick combination though a lot of times but he actually has a pretty good head kick uh, his knees is, uh, from the clinch are actually pretty good my problem with him though is his takedown defense looks pretty bad uh, I saw him fight Chris, Christos Giagos I saw him fight an another guy too um, his submission ability is good, though, but he also seemed a little too content off his back. 
this is a like I know Dober is like twenty seven years old, but with six with his record and experience, Dober's kind of I don't think he's a prospect anymore. I think the guy is pretty much a firm like veteran at this point. And he show he fights like a veteran now. And he's against Jason Gonzalez, who's still a prospect in my opinion. So this one's tough. Uh, because Drew Dober has veteran savvy now. He might just take the fight to the ground if he needs to. I'd like Jason Gonzalez to standing. I like him. Uh, I think he can uh, touch up Dober. Uh, the thing is that Dober starts wrestling though. Like Gonzalez isn't. Like I said, he's good off his back, but he can be a little too content off his back, looking for like sweeps or subs. But not always having the urgency to scramble back to his feet. Sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. Um, I see for the most part he won't. <laughs> but I really liked what I saw from him. So, I'm going to go Jason Gonzalez to win this one. I'll even go by sub. Um, I liked his overall game. I liked his stand-up game. And like I said, his submission ability is pretty good. He is good on the ground. Him being a taller fighter might help him too. Uh, I don't like his takedown defense, and I don't like that Jason Gonzalez is also a little too content off his back, too. And that could help Dover. So, Jason Gonzalez by sub, but one I'm not, not a pick I'm confident in. Okay, to recap. Uh, let's see, I have Alistair Overeem beating Stipe Miocic by K.O. Tico. Verdum, Fabricio Verdum over Travis Brown by decision. Mickey Gall over Phil Brooks by K. Ortico. Jimmy Havera beating Uri Faber by decision. And Jessica Andraj beating Joanne Caldwood by K. Ortico. On FS1 prelims, up Jessica I over Betch Cohea by decision. Nick Lentz over Michael McBride by decision. Brad Tavares over Kyle Magalash by decision. And Ray Borg beating Ian McCall by decision. On uh, the Fight Pass prelims, I have Medeiros beating Sean Spencer by K.O. Tico. C.B. Dalloway over Francis Marbroso by decision. And Jason Gonzalez beating Drew Dober by submission. So, that's pretty much it for my prediction for UFC 203, Miochik vs. Overeem. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And uh, please check out my website at www.chrismaldon.com. You can uh, buy some of my works, starting with my first novel, The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for $4.99 on my website or on Amazon.com. Or if you have, uh, or for just $1.99, you can get some of my short stories or short story collections. Uh, starting with uh, the Land of the Wooden Statues, the Horror Collection, and the Fantasy Fable Collection. So, uh, that's pretty much it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.